<laughs> I was going to say hi and then I started thinking of something else. So that was delayed. I wonder if it showed delayed on the video. Anyways, good afternoon. It's time for our Jesus Calling devotional. My name is Sheena and I'm thankful. I'm thankful that I'm not reading this alone and I have you here with me today. So we're going to be looking at August 20th and it's a, it's a pretty long one today actually and I'm, I'm excited to read it because it's it begins with I'm the God who heals and on this channel we talk about healing from the pain of our past the hurt and everything that that's taken place in your life up until this point and I'm so glad that you're wise enough to know that God's word is a healing word and he can help you through all your troubles so let's get into this and see what God has for us I am the God who heals I heal broken bodies, broken minds, broken hearts, broken lives, and broken relationships. My very presence has immense healing powers. You cannot live close to me without experiencing some degree of healing. However, it is also true that you have not because you ask not. You receive the healing that flows naturally from my presence, whether you seek it or not. But there's more, much more available to those who ask. So God's working, you know. Think about it. God's healing on a physical sense. If you get a scratch or a scrape, the next thing you know, you look down, you got a scab. It's like healing, and you've done nothing. God's continually healing us. He's preparing us as we sleep at night, right? Renewing cells. But it says here there's so much more available to us. The first step in receiving healing, now listen up, is to live ever so close to me. The benefits of this practice are too numerous to list. As you grow more and more intimate with me, I reveal my will to you more directly. So how do you know God's will? You, you stay close to him. You stay reading. This is so good. This is so good. When the time is right, I prompt you to ask for healing of some brokenness in you or in another person. The healing may be instantaneous or it may be a process. That's up to me. Your part is to trust me fully and to thank me for the restoration that has begun. So work is being done whether you're putting forth effort or not, but God wants us to to really lean into our healing, right? And to count on him and to believe him to restore you and me. I rarely heal all the brokenness in a person's life. Even my servant Paul was told my grace is sufficient for you when he sought healing for the thorn in his flesh. Nonetheless, much healing is available to those whose lives are intimately interwoven with mine, as and you will receive. So the key here to healing your broken heart to say your broken mind, your broken life, your broken relationship, your broken body. The, the key here is to stay close and connected to Jesus. He's our source for everything. The first scripture is Psalm 103, verse 3. So we got the Bible right here. Now this air conditioner, I'm sitting out back. I forgot to turn it off, so um, listen up a little closer here. It says, he forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. Very simple. Psalm 103. He heals all our sin. He forgives all our sins and heals all our diseases. So God is, that's his job, right? If God were to have a job, is to heal you and to cleanse you from sin, right? That's why he sent his son Jesus to do the finished work on the cross. So right there is a worth of praise. You know that little praise dance you do? do that. James 4 2. Now let's see if we can find this. Oh look at that. I, I can't believe it. I flipped right to it. I thought the Bible pages were going to be turning a lot more than that. So James 4 2 says you want what you don't have so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous for what others have and you can't possess it, so you fight and quarrel and take it away from them. And yet the reason you don't have what you want is that you don't ask God for it. Okay, so this is saying you see other people having this and that, and you try to take what they have or, or be like them or get what they got. But God's like, 
anything you want is here for you, just ask me for it. Just, just ask and pray my will be done. And if it's for you in my perfect time, you're going to get that thing. You're going to have it. And I've seen that in my life recently. Let me tell you, the Lord is moving, okay? He's a suddenly God. Don't count him out. Oh, my God, don't count him out. 2 Corinthians 12, 7, 9. So let's flip over there. 2 Corinthians 12, chapter, or verse 7 through 9. It says, a spiritual gift is given to each of us as a means of helping the entire church. To one person, the Spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, He gives the gift of special knowledge. So God's about um, things we ask for, He wants to give them to us. And he's, everybody has gifts, right? Everybody, once you are... Um, in God's family, you all have these spiritual gifts that are given to us to help um, the entire church. And some have wisdom and knowledge or to give wise advice, the ability to give wise advice. Um, there's a little section here about spiritual gifts. It says spiritual gifts are discussed in detail in four New Testament passages in Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4 and 1 Peter 4. These lists are to be regarded as representative of spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts are those gifts given by the Spirit of God for the accomplishment of God's purpose in the world and for the edification of the church and the body of Christ. Two things are important to remember concerning spiritual gifts. Every believer has been given spiritual gifts and the gifts belong to God and are given for the believer to use for the glory of God. So see, everybody, listen, if you're listening to this video and you've asked Jesus into your heart, you've got a spiritual gift, okay? Now you've got to exercise that gift. Why? Because it's for the edification of the body of Christ and to bring glory to the Lord, to be used for God's purpose. Because remember, we're his hands and feet. You know, God, of course, God is everywhere. He sees everybody, can do all things, but he... He's looking for people like you, yes, you, to get on in there, roll up your sleeves, discover your gifts, and use those to build up the, the church, right? So the world can know that Jesus is alive, okay? This is good. That's so good. That's really good. And the last scripture, I'm getting a little excited, everybody settle down, is uh, Matthew 7-7. Seven, seven. So we got to go back this way. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So Matthew is the first book in the New Testament. And um, let's see, verse 7 says, Keep on asking, and you will be given what you ask for. Keep on looking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open. So what do you have to do? You have to ask. You have to look. You have to find it. And if you don't find it, you keep knocking and you kind of repeat that cycle. Okay? Ask, look, knock, and, and just until you find it, right? Until the answer comes. God doesn't want you to keep on, yeah, keep on asking and you'll be given what you ask for. That's the title of this section in Matthew chapter 7. That's so good, right? It goes on to say, let's keep going. For everyone who asks, receives, and everyone who seeks, finds. And the door is open to everyone who knocks because what's that scripture you know god's not going to give oh it's right here um let me just keep reading it about the snake and the loaf um your parents if your children ask for a loaf of bread do you give them a stone instead or if they ask for a fish do you give them a snake of course you don't if you sinful people know how to get good good gifts to your children how much more will your heavenly father give good give good gifts to those who ask him. And I think for me, I'm learning like the key to, to getting those good gifts, not that God's like this genie in a bottle, but we should be asking for things that are lined up with God's plan for you, the original plan, right? When he thought of you and pray, you know, anytime you pray and ask for something, Lord, if this is your will, if this is what you want me to do, if this is what you want me to have, this is what you want me to say, it's, it's going to get done because God can't contradict himself, right? He can, and he wants to. He wants to give us good things, like it says here in the scriptures. Your parents, um, 
most likely in most cases want to give you things and want to see you happy, right? And excited about something that uh, they've done for you. So allow God to do something for you, but you have to ask, you know, you can't be afraid to ask for what you want. And, and even um, talking about just regular life, you know, not just in our prayer time, but, you know, if you've got something going on in your life and you need help, and it, you know, ask someone to help you. It's okay. You're worth asking, you know, and that person can decide if they're going to help you or not. But don't, don't think you're, you, you feel embarrassed or you feel like, you know, you feel strange asking for help. Don't, don't do that. You know, God puts people in our path and in places that can help when they can help. But don't be afraid to ask for what you need and speak up for yourself. And, and the answer might be yes, sometimes it may be no, but at least you know you, you tried, right? And um, people always feel funny about that. I'm learning not to. <laughs> if, listen, why am I going to make myself feel like I'm burdening someone else when that person has the free will to say no I'm not able to do that for you at this time you know but you you can ask why am I getting out of breath I'm getting all worked up don't go for that <laughs> but yeah ask for what you need ask for what you need go to God in your prayers and pray his will and ask for what you need and he'll surely ask you in his perfect time because He's an on-time God, and we all know that. He is an all-time God. An on, all time. Well, he's all-time and on-time. I've had a day. I've had a day. But, yeah, just hearing myself talk and reading these scriptures, it's like God is really real. And I don't know how to convey that to you because I don't know where you are in your relationship with the Lord. Like, how far along are you? How far... How um, long do you want to be? How much do you want to grow in Christ? Like how closely, how close do you want to be to him? You know, what, what relationship do you want to have? And, and that's really up to you. God's there, you know, he's knocking on the door and he's saying, come on, let's, let's grow, right? Let's get closer and let's, let's do this thing together. So he's waiting for you. He's waiting for you. So don't be, don't be, be scared. <laughs> get in the word you know keep listening if this is your first time i'm so glad you're here i'm so glad you found the channel and just keep listening to uh the bible with me you know i do it a little different but we're all different you know so if you've landed here you're supposed to be here you're supposed to be here keep coming back listen every day and watch your life change right before your eyes it really will all right you can heal family that's it i love you <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Always remember, true healing begins with self-love. Why? Because God is love, and he lives on the inside of you, and there's no greater love than his. As much as I love you, I can't all love you. For, because God, God, um, God thinks of you all day. I don't, right? Let's be honest. But God does. He loves you that much. We'll talk soon. Bye.